black and some people are nasty. I'm both of them. I'm just an old man making records. You gotta respect it. I'm connected. In 1988, I went across the border through Brownfield and went to, uh, you know, have a for New Year's Eve. I mean, you know, New Year's, I'm gonna spend New Year's Eve in it. This is the most incredible deal you're gonna ever hear. I want y'all to really play the CD and get the shoe finish. And when I call you motherfuckers, is because somebody you fuck is probably somebody's mother. So it's not a disrespectful term, okay? Cut all this bullshit, man. People need to be able to say what they need to say before. So I'm going to cut you off. I'm going to cut you off. I don't care what letter you are. Don't mess with me. I'm a grown man, okay? I'm going to be 51 years old. I got no time for this cancel shit. I'm not even on social media. Okay? You don't see me taking pictures of my baby and shit putting out there. You don't see me taking the shit reading the newspaper where it said Donald Trump was a thief. So, save that shit, man. Try to cancel this shit. I tell you, you can't cancel me. I get paid. I'm in retirement. So how the fuck you don't cancel retirement? They couldn't take OJ retirement. Remember? The family trying to, no, hell no, you can't never touch a nigga retirement. So, chill with that shit. Cancel these nerds. The shit knocks. America's you can kick one. rocks. We family. It's the intro. 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 You know how we do it. You know how we do it. You know we do it. Well, then go Don't fuck your mama. Me. Then screw it. Boy, you nasty. Boy, you nasty. Boy, you nasty. nasty. Too big. I wish y'all had uh, too black. So I go to the party. It's twenty-five dollars to get in, but it's all the well liquor they got to you for free. You don't have to pay. You drink all night. It's free. You don't have a fucked up headache. But you twenty-five dollars to drink yourself to death. You can't get better suicide rates than that off the TV or the internet. Okay, for real. And so I met this singer, Rita, man. She took me back to her room. She did the snake dance, man. First time I let somebody put the foot in my mouth. I was nervous because she walked barefoot down there in the jungle. I'm from the city. And she, you know, the, the, the damn, it was dirt in the fucking floor of the club. And she didn't have no shoes on. So, but, you know, so I figured it's alcohol. It killed the germs and shit. And so basically, yeah, it killed the germs. But anyway, um, the motherfucker stole everything. <laughs> she didn't even leave my ID. And I couldn't come back. I was trapped down there in this motherfucker, okay? And I didn't know what to do. My mama couldn't do that. But I remember, I have a friend who played professional football. I've known since the eighth grade. We went to high school together, went to college. I called him and shit. I don't know what the fuck he did, but about six hours later, they come and get me and shit. I'm thinking I'm going down to the brigade and they're going to interrogate me with all kind of tactics and shit. And you know I'm a general, so I would have to die first to give up the information. So anyway, they take me to the board at Brownsville and shit and tell me, now walk back, but don't come back and, and kick me out the deal. He called some people and they were cool enough and dropped me off and grabbed me. So anyway, he goes to prison through 20 years and shit. He gets out of prison and the first thing he's, is he's finna get married. You know, conjugal visits is a motherfucker. You can still get married if you've been in prison for 20 years. Don't ask me how. But anyway, so he has the wedding. He invites me to the wedding. Me and my girlfriend, I said, let's go. I book a hotel for a week, pay me. 15 something for a week, and, you know, and all the bullshit. So we get down there, you know what I'm saying, and everything. It's the bachelor party. And remember, I haven't seen Anthony in 35 years. I'm like, gonna be 51, you know, and Anthony's 54, he's a little older than me. And shit, that's a big ass nigga. He came from Germany, he's half black, half white, some shit. But anyway, so when we uh, went to the bachelor party, he didn't even know I was coming. So you could imagine how crunk this was. Get to the bachelor party. Everything VIP, he used to play professional football. It ain't nothing but pros around there. Uh, they in a distribution deal. People don't realize that his company and <laughs> have a brand of weed. They got into, and you know, that's how he making his money. I don't mean to put his business out there. I won't say the name <laughs> listening. Mighty Whitey, you government officials. I know what you're doing. But anyway, so I go to the bachelor party. They got all the weed you can drink, all the cocaine you can smoke, all the pills you can take. They don't have no damn balloons. But they got every kind of liquor, jello shots, and they got scantily clad women walking around of all shapes, all colors, with and without asses, with and without breasts, with and without dicks. It didn't matter. They were everywhere and shit. And so we get to ecstasy. I get so crunk in ecstasy, they give me some limelight. 
and I'm doing these crazy chants and shit that we be doing. They didn't know what, the, they thought I was from fucking Africa. They said, what kind of rap is that and shit? Are you Indian? You do all this tribal stuff and we never heard nothing like that. And that's where that, I'm too big. I'm too blame. They was, and the people was like, and they was, it was live. I mean, ain't nothing like seeing 400 strippers and 25 guys with dollars going, you know, and with your shit. And she dancing and shit. I'm too nasty. I did that song, man. And I knew. And I had some other one. I said, it ain't nothing but paper. Let her pick it up. Show her ass. She's a shaker. It ain't nothing but paper. Boy, I turned that bitch out with nothing but chance, man. And shit, and that's how I was in your way because of that bachelor party. Well, lo and behold, the bachelor party started at 9 o'clock. I don't get home till 9 a.m. When I get back home to the hotel at 9 a.m., my girl is packed up in the bathroom crying and says, well, nothing else to do with me. I'm a scoundrel. I'm trash. How dare her? And she just didn't understand the depths. This man saved my life. Nobody knows this story but me and him. And I told that story at his bachelor party. And she dumped me because I came back at 9 in the morning. And I've never done no, I, that ain't even me. And I sent the video at 5 in the morning showing her the big old house. The house had 200 feet ceiling and shit. They had, man, it was so far up there, dust don't go. That's how the fuck you got a house up. So, you know, dust can't even get that far up. Dust be like this. Oh, fuck it. You know, come on. I'm going to get in this corner right here and make folks up. But yeah, and she dumped me. So I've been alone the last year and a half. And so since I've been alone, you know, now it's wherever I put my condoms on, it's my home. And don't be offended, you know what I'm saying? Some families are blended, splendid. Mm. I come from a single parent family, that's a different time. But that's just gonna tell y'all the story. And that's why I'm girlless now. But since then, the fruits of my labor have took off. Now I don't have to worry about she always asked me, who wrote that? When you write that? Why you rapping about that? You did that shit. She think everything I said was true. And 99% of it is because she don't know that. Yeah, I was talking about when I fucked her girlfriend. The girlfriend wanted to fuck me. It was a mutual trade and shit. She needed money for gas and I needed ass. It worked out for both of us. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 35 Let's go in. Years, Get the mix man. on. I'm sorry. Everyone got to spit their shit. Mr. Classy. Motherfucking hay train, Black Moses, Black Nasty. What about you? Except me. Maurice Artis. Mary Todd's third with the word.